Hello, hi, a very well, uh, good morning and assalamu alaikum to all my respected listeners and audience. I'm Dr. Shahriyar Afzal. I am a assistant professor here in the Massa University, Sydney, Gold, Malaysia. I have did my PhD from the University of Science Malaysia in 2018. And uh, today, um, first of all, I need to say very much thanks to ACSTM 2021 to provide me a great platform and an opportunity to share my research findings at this uh, August uh, platform. So with all this one, I will share my, my research findings with you. The title for my presentation is the crosstalk relationship between the adiponectin receptors, P bar gamma, and alpha receptors in real vasculature of diabetic diabetes virus. Basically, uh, this uh, research it encompasses and covers the diabetes in the experimental animals, which are the pistarchiotyrides. So, as we know, the diabetes it can precipitate the hypertension by activating the sympathetic nervous system and the ROS, renin and neurotrophic system, and both of these systems they promote the sodium retention within the body. Whereas the elevated blood glucose they damage the vascular endothelial cells, and as a result, they increase the oxidative stress, and ultimately they cause the vascular reactivity in the diabetic individuals or patients. Whereas adiponectin as an insulin sensitizing hormone, it mediates the beneficial effects of uh, thiazolidobins, basically used as a hypoglycemic agent, of which the primary target is the PPAR gamma, peroxisome proliferated activity receptors, which is a positive regulator of the adiponectin gene expression. The activation of this PPAR gamma, it helps in the transcription of the adiponectin receptors and it upregulates the plasma adiponectin within the body. So ultimately, we can say the use of PEPAR gamma agonists, they regulates and cause an increase in its plasma concentration that helps in averting the diabetic complication and the vascular disorders. On the other line, it is certain, which is a angiotensin receptor blocker, it also activates the PEPAR gamma as a partial PEPAR gamma agonist. It's not the full PEPAR, but is the partial PEPAR gamma agonist it induces the adiponectin expression, self-regulating of its angiotensin receptor type 1 blocking properties. It means apart from having its own angiotensin receptor blockers, it also acts as a partial PPAR gamma agonist. So therefore, this bifunctional property of the angiotensin receptor blockers, it activates the partial agonists. So the objective of the study to examine the effect of the exogenously administered adiponectin as insulin sensitizing hormone on the metabolic, renal hemodynamics, and excretive functions in the diabetic model of the restorative rats. The first and the second one objective of this study was to identify the synergistic action between the adiponectin with the PPAR gamma agonists in attenuating the renal hemodynamics to the adrenergic agonists. And the last one, the least, to explore the crosstalk relationship between the adipo R1, adiponectin receptor 1, and adiponectin receptors 2, PPAR gamma, and AT1 receptors with a subset of alpha receptor subtypes in moderating the vasoactive receptors responses to the angiotensin 2 and adrenergic agonists. With all this one, I want to share this one. This, is, this was the flowchart for the grouping of the study. We make the seven groups, the one Vistar group with WKY, it was the non-treated, it was the negative control, the positive control was the diabetic streptozotocin, in which we use, we produce a model by giving the streptozotocin. The third group was adiponectin, exogenously administered, pyogletazone, it was also administered at the dose of the 30 mg per kg, irbisartan was administered at the dose of the 10 mg per kg, and adiponectin and the pyogletazone combination in the group 6, and the last group where was the combination of adiponectin with the So all the groups, they contain the, the N is equal to six. It was the, uh, the number of the animals they used. We obtained the body weight, fluid intake, and the urine output as metabolic parameters. Then we also made the non-invasive blood pressure on the day zero, then between before giving the STZ at the day eight. And then we started the protocol for the drug treatments up to the day 21, when we started giving the from the 21 to 28. 
The blood and the urine samples, they were being given at the respective days and the biochemical analysis was done in terms of the measuring the fasting blood glucose, plasma dependent concentration, urinary creatinine, absolute and the fractional sodium excretion, urinary potassium and the urine to sodium potassium ratio. So all the biochemical analysis, they can pass these parameters. Whereas from the interrenal acute study, when the experiment, when the treatment protocol were finished, we performed the acute renal acute surgery for the, all these experimental animals. And the, during that one, the real cortical blood perfusion was measured with the acute vasoconstriction study, including the adrenergic agonist, including the norelin, phenylephrine, methoxamine, and angiotensin 2. MAP, mean arterial blood pressure, systolic blood pressure, and diastolic blood pressure were also measured during the acute renal study. Arterial stiffness was also measured, but this was not the part, but this is not the part of the study right now over here. So the treatment started with the Ibisartin. We give 30 mg per uh, kg, pagnotazone 10 mg per kg orally for 28 days, starting from the day one. And then a dipenetine was given from the day from the 2.5 microgram per kg per day, starting from the day 21 to 28. Then we, first of all, we have to say that we, we took the seven days for, uh, from the, for making the animals for the acclimatization. Before that one, we took all the metabolic data in terms of the water intake, urine output, and the unisodium potassium ratio, urine creatine, and the blood samples were also measured. So then once we produce the, uh, we produce the, the STZ, we give the STZ and produce the diabetic model. Again, we took these all parameters. And then the animals were given the uh, drug treatments up to the day 21, as had been mentioned in the previous slide. And then uh, for, uh, from the day 21, the deep nutrient was given up to the day 28. On the day 28, we performed the acute study. Anesthesia were given, metabolic data was, was taken again, one day before that one. And the, the animal was anesthetized using the phenobarbital uh, at the rate of the 60 mg per kg intracritorial. So one hour was given almost for the for the stabilization of the animal before the animal was going for the for the interrenal acute study uh, protocol. We perform the tracheotomy. We cannulate the jugular vein. We cannulate the uh, carotid artery, and then midline incision was given on the abdominal region. Iliac artery was also cannulated, and the kidney was exposed and was placed with the laser Doppler flu probe for making the renal cortical blood perfusion. So before that one, uh, by completing this experiment, the animal were ethanized with an extra dose of the pentobarton that was a 200 microgram per kg intravenously. Before that one, we took the blood sample and again, we made the plasma dipenetine concentration. Again, this is the protocol for the experiment, study protocol, ectomization on the day zero, day one to day seven was for the study for the giving the, uh, producing the model. Metal data for the, up to the day eight, and the treatment was given starting from the day nine to 29. In that one, we give the adiponectin either or with the adiposartin. And whereas from the day 21, we started giving the, as an add-on drug, the adiponectin. So metal data, data and the plasma samples, they were collected uh, before the new intervention of the treatment protocols. Cannulation was done and before the time of the acute experiments on the day 30th month and the carotid artery, jugular artery, iliac artery, they all were cannulated. And then vasopressor and vaso in the urinal acute study where experiments were conducted, including the adrenergic agonist, noradine, phenylephrine, methoxazamine, and angiotensin 2. So this was the doses we used, the 200, 400, 800 nanogram for the noradine, 2, 4, and 8 microgram for phenylephrine, 2, 4, 8 for the methoxamine, 5, 10, and 20 nanogram for the angiotensin 2. So again, this is the protocol for the internal acute summary of the acute internal acute experimental protocol. So this was the surgical setup. Here you can see that we perform the tracheotomy. Then we can read the jugular vein, infuse the saline, maintain the dose of the anesthesia, can read the carotid artery. Then we connected this to a pressure transducer, which was coupled to the computerized data acquisition system. And then when we perform the uh, uh, for the uh, abdominal uh, incision, we cannulate the iliac artery. We place the renal cortic uh, uh, the uh, probe on the kidneys to measure the renal cortic blood perfusion. It was also connected to the pressure transducer, coupled to the computerized data acquisition system. 
So with all this one, the results for the WKY groups as a metabolic indices, here you can see uh, the body weight, water intake, and the urine flow rate, they were measured. As the groups were by uh, were categorized as a WKY wise control, no, no medication was given, no treatment. WKY diabetes, only the model was produced, no medication. The diabetes with the abisartan, then the group diabetes with the pyoglitazone, diabetes with the uh, adiponectin, and with the combination in the next two groups, either with the adiponectin uh, with the abisartan or the pyoglitazone. There you can see there was an abrupt decrease in the body weight of the of the diabetic of the diabetic individuals. With the treatments, with the body weight, the trend for the decrease in the body weight remained continued. There was no further improvement in the body weight of the diabetic individuals. The water intake. It was also say uh, at the same uh, pattern. The water uh, water intake was increased in case of the diabetic individuals, and this trend remained same in case of all the animals, either they were treated with any kind of the treatments. The urine flow rate it was also increased as compared to the normal uh, control group in the diabetic individuals, and this trend was further increased in case of the uh, diabetic animals which were treated either with any kind of the treatment individually or in combination with the adiponectin. Blood glucose concentration, it was increased when we induced the streptozotocin in the diabetic individual, diabetic groups, and we'll see there was no further improvement on the blood glucose concentration either with any of the treatment protocols. Heart rate beat, it was, in, it was increased in case of the in diabetic individuals, but here you can see that with the treatments using the adiponectin, particularly with the combination of the adibisartan or the baglitazone, it was decreased. So it was a positive effect, positive effect on the, on the heart rate decrease. Then we move towards the renal hemodynamic parameters, which include the creatinine clearance, urinary creatinine, urinary sodium concentration, and fraction sodium excretion and sodium to potassium ratio. Again, we can see over here, we measured the, these parameters on the day zero before the treatment given, before the animal was, uh, was uh, modulated for the, uh, for the diabetes. Then for the day 21 and uh, the day 28 again, when the treatment was completed. So here you can see again the creatinine credulence, it was increased in case of the adaptive individuals and it was further going to be increased in case of the, in case of the treatments when they were given. Whereas in case of the urinary creatinine, it was decreased in case of the diabetic uh, model, and this trend was going to be contracted in case of the treatments. It means when we given the treatments, particularly the pyrotazone and the adiponectin, and the combination of the adiponectin with either abisartan or pyrotazone, the trend of increasing of urinary creatinine, it was taken place means it was the effect of this combination of these drugs on the creatinine, on the urinary creatinine production. Urinary sodium volume, it was increased in case of the adaptic individuals and it may going to increase in case of the, uh, in case of the treatment protocols. It, either we use the single combination or we use the combination of the, of the drugs in the, uh, in the adaptic uh, rats. Fraction sodium excretion, it was also increased in case of the diabetic individuals, and it was going to be further increased in case of the treatment protocols, but there was a slight decrease in case of the combination of the adiponentin with the pyrotazone as a full PPR gamma agonist. Sodium potassium concentration was also measured, and it was, it was decreased in case of the diabetic individuals, whereas we, can, we observe that there was a significant and very important uh, reversal in terms of the increase of the sodium potassium ratio, when we use a combination of the adiponectin with the full PPAR gamma agonist, that is the pyrotazone. So all the parameters, all these parameters, they have been significantly identified in terms of the these values, which has been given as statistically analyzed. Then we made the plasma adiponectin concentration. Here again, we can see that the combination of the adiponectin with the pyrotazone in the last group, it was significantly increased, whereas it doesn't reach to the normal level of the, of the, of, uh, of the uh, control group. Then, whereas the blood, uh, the baseline cortical blood perfusion, it, it didn't, it, there was no effect on the real cortical blood perfusion in case of any of the groups, so there was no significant change was observed. 
Whereas when we observe the percentage drop in the renal cortical perfusion when you use the three different uh, doses in the ascending and descending manner in all these groups. So there was, you can see again, the effect of the combination of the adiponectin with the pagliatazone, the renal cortical blood perfusion was decreased in terms of the, in terms of the, uh, renal, uh, of the percentage drop. This is the cumulative overall percentage drop in case of the norodally. So here again, we can observe that, that the combination of the pagliatazone with the adiponectin, it significantly decreased the percentage drop in the renal cortical blood perfusion. It means it tries to compensate the, the normal blood perfusion level in case of the diabetic animals. Phenylephrine, again, we can see there was the three different doses were used and they were given in the ascending and the descending manner. Here again, we observe the combination of the adiponectin with the abisartan or the pagritazone, which was, it, it, it shows a decrease in the percentage drop of the renal particle perfusion, but it was a larger extent in case of the pagritazone combination with the adiponectin. Then this is again is the is the is the overall percentage drop in the uh, renal cortical perfusion in terms of the phenylephrine, which is the alpha one uh, uh, adrenergic agonist. So again, we can see the percentage of decrease was more in case of the pagritazone with the adiponectin. Then we further move to the next alpha one adrenergic agonist, methoxamine. We again use the three doses: 0.5, 1, and 2 microgram uh, per mm. So again, we can see that the combination of the pagliatas uh, with the adiponectin, it shows a further decrease in the percentage drop of the renal cortical blood perfusion as compared to the other combination type of the drugs. This is the overall percentage drop as we have seen previously. So it again it shows the percentage drop in case of the combination of the pagliatazone uh, with, the, uh, with the adiponectin so whereas we can see the pagodazone is a full PPAR gamma agonist, it shows the more increase, more decrease in the in the percentage drop of the uh, of the renal cortical perfusion. Then we move to the angiotensin two. Since we are using the herbicidin, which is angiotensin sector blocker, so we also use we induce we infuse interrenally angiotensin two. So over here, when we give the angiotensin two. So surprisingly, but uh, uh, very interestingly, the percentage drop in case of the LV sergeant with the adiponectin was more pronounced as compared to the other combination type of the drugs in case of the uh, percentage drop of the real perfusion. So here you can see as compared to the previous treatments where the pagodazone showed is much more effect. Whereas in this uh, treatment, in this renal interrenal infusion of the endotensin 2, where the receptors, they were blocked already with the, with the LV sergeant treatment, with the LV sergeant, which means the, uh, it shows a uh, more, uh, more uh, increase in the percentage drop of the renal cortical blood perfusion in terms of the, in, in the group of which we used the combination of the epicertin with the adiponectin. So finally, we conclude from these studies that once we induce, we administer the exogenous adiponectin with the pagliatazone as a full PPAR chemical, it substantially attenuates renal hemodynamics and improve the activity functions as we observe from the creatine and the uh, sodium excretion and absolute fraction sodium excretion and the sodium potassium ratio. Pharmacodynamically, we may say that there's a crosstalk interaction exists between the PPAR gamma, proximal protected receptors, adiponectin receptors R1, R2, adenoceptors and AK1 receptors, along signaling pathway in the real vasculature of the diabetic WD device. It means that these receptors, they interact that there's a crosstalk interaction exists between these receptors within the kidney or the renal vasculature of the diabetic visceral cuter rats and they interact uh, at the signaling pathways. One more thing, that is a degree of the synergy exists between the adiponectin and the pagliatazone, which is a full PPAR gamma agonist as compared to the ibisartan, which is the partial PPAR gamma agonist in attenuating or offsetting the renal vascular receptiveness to the adrenergic agonist since the adrenergic agonist, they increase the receptiveness to the in the renal vasculature and it was attenuated, it was blunted by using the combination of the drugs with the full PPAR gamma agonist and the deponent. Last but not the least, the renal protection, which was ultimately conferred 
for using the dibunakin in combination with the pagliprazole is superior is superior as compared to the as compared as that conferred by the dibunakin alone and in combination with the adversatin in the status that was induced diabetic WKYS. So it means that as a full PPAR gamma agonist, the uh, uh, pagliprazole has shown much more effect in combination with the dibunakin as compared to its separate treatment or in combination of the adversatin with the dibunakin. So these were the major conclusions of this particular study. With all this one, I may say thanks to all of my uh, respective listeners and researchers. These were the references for my studies, which I used for doing the conduction of my protocol. With all this one, thank you very much once again to ACSTM 2021 to provide me an opportunity to share my experiences and research findings over here. Thank you very much. Take care.